This video is about potential energy diagrams. Uh, if you're doing this in the classroom situation where you are viewing this on your phone, um, two people per phone, um, if necessary, otherwise individually. Um, if you're in groups, you can listen to it out loud. If you'd rather listen to your headphones, that's fine. Um, if I'm walking around and I notice that you are not uh, viewing the correct videos, you are not on task, I will confiscate your phone and you can have it back at the proper time um, of the next day and it'll send down to the office. So this is your warning um, and you won't get another one. So this goes along with your notes um, in the packet. They're on potential energy diagrams that looks like this. Okay. A couple words we need to go to begin with. We have the activation energy. This is the minimum amount of energy that particles must have in order to react. And then we have your activated complex. This is the unstable arrangement of atoms that form temporarily at the peak of AE, which is your activation energy barrier. So this is a diagram of a typical um, potential energy diagram. There's two different types. This is one. You'll get to the next one in a little bit. Okay. On our x-axis, we have the progress of the reaction. Our y-axis, we have the energy required in standard is in uh, kilojoules, which is that kJ. Uh, we have our energy diagram, where we start with our reactants. Then we have this little hump that comes either down to your products. So starting with reactants, then the products. At the top of the peak here is where your activated complex is, your transition state. You can have your reactants and then your products. Now the difference between where your reactants are and your products are, this is your delta H, or the change in energy for the actual reaction. This hump here is the amount of energy that's required for the reaction to take place. So it has to reach this certain energy. It's like a roller coaster. In order to get the roller coaster to start moving, you've got to climb up that big hill, and it takes forever to build that anticipation. And once you reach the top, then all of a sudden, shoom, you can go through, and everything's good after that. And you have enough energy to propel you all the way through to the finish line, usually. Same goes for reactions. They have to get over this hump so they can continue down and go to their products, go to finishing, to completion. Okay? So the difference between your reactants and where the transition state is, this is your activation energy from the peak your transition state from your reactants. Okay? You can introduce a catalyst. This is going to lower your activation energy. It offers an alternative pathway that has less resistance. So it would be moving quicker up the hill um, and pushing down, and it still is able to get over this hump easier. I drew it in a dotted red line. Notice that here we have a smaller activation energy to allow my reaction to progress. Alright, diagram number one, we have a couple of questions to answer. Let's take a moment and look at what our diagram is telling us. We have our course of our reaction and our energy in kilojoules. We have our reactants and then our products. We notice that our products are at a higher energy level than our reactants. We notice how much energy it took to get to our transition state and then down to our products. Okay, there's a difference in energy between my reactants and my products. There's a difference in energy between my reactants and my activated complex at the top. And then if I introduce a catalyst, I notice that my activation energy is going to decrease. So that's what we take in from our diagram. Then I need to answer my questions. The first one asks, what letter represents the activation energy for the forward reaction? So that's my reaction going to the right. My activation energy is the difference between my reactants and the top of my peak, so that's this line here, that's A. Number two asks, what is the value of the activation energy in kilojoules? So that's my activation energy, I notice at the top of my peak is 280 kilojoules, at the bottom at reactants is 120 kilojoules, so 280 subtracted from that 120 is 160 kilojoules, that's my amount of my activation energy required. 3 asks what letter represents my change in energy for the reaction, my delta H, and what is its value? 
Well, my change in energy is the amount between my reactants and products. Okay, my products are finishing at 240. My reactants are at 120. 240 minus 120 is 120 kilojoules. And this is represented by letter B. Okay. Uh, number four, S is this reaction is endo or exothermic. My products are ending at a higher energy than my reactants, so it took energy to get to my products. Therefore, energy was entered the system. Therefore, must uh, my products at a higher energy? Energy is used, so it's endothermic. Number five asks, how would introducing a catalyst change the diagram? Well, like we said, here it's going to lower my activation energy, offering an alternative pathway. Okay, this is diagram number two. We want to first take a look at what is my diagram telling us. I want to locate it starting here. I have my peak up at about 175 kilojoules, ending down at about 50 kilojoules. My course of reaction, my energy. I notice I have a change in my reactants to my products, my reactants to the peak, and the difference between the peak and my product. Number five asks to indicate if this reaction is exo or endothermic and give the letter corresponding. Well, it gives off energy. We know that because my prod or my reactants start here, after it goes down, my products end at a lower energy, so that energy had to go somewhere. So therefore it escapes. It leaves the system, goes into the environment. And so since it ends at a lower state, it is B, the difference between my reactants, which is A, and my products, which is C, and therefore it's exothermic. Six asks, what letter represents the activation energy and what is its value? Well, my activation energy is the difference between my reactants and my products, and how much of an energy is needed to get from one to the other. Um, to reach my transition state as the area where I can now start heading in the direction I want to. So the difference between my reactants and the top of my diagram is my activation energy. Here being letter A. This should be letter A. Okay. The difference of 175 to 125 is going to be 50. So let me just fix that for you. So I have my difference of 175 to 125. Okay. 25. That tells me my change is 50 kilojoules, which is represented by letter A. Number seven asks, what is the effect on the diagram of increasing the concentration of the reactant? Well, if I increase my concentration of the reactant, there's going to be more collisions. Um, therefore, the reaction is going to progress faster. So it increases my rate, but it doesn't change my activation energy. So it doesn't change how much energy is required to force that reaction to go forward. Okay, therefore, it just kind of thinifies, so it kind of just decreases my amount of time, squishes it together this way but doesn't change how high my activation energy is. It only decreases the time of my reaction. Number eight, as what letter represents the position of the activated complex? Well, that's going to be this top of my little hump there at the crest. That's letter lowercase b. The energy of this activated complex is 175 kilojoules. I just draw a line across. And one's drawn across for you. Okay. Notice that it has a high energy. It is unstable complex. And it wants to be in a lower, more stable energy level. Hence why this big drop in energy here. This is only a temporary um, time. Number nine. Ask how would introducing a catalyst change the diagram? 
Well, just like before, introducing a catalyst is going to decrease my activation energy. So instead of 175 kilojoules, it could be something like 150 kilojoules. And I would draw it the same as I did before, just with a dotted line coming up a little bit and then coming down and intersecting back with my line. Again, it just offers an alternative pathway that has less resistance. Um, it's easier for the reaction to proceed. Okay. Now you're going to go in your packet and do worksheet number four. The worksheet looks like this. You're going to do both sides. If you finish that before the time is up, you can go ahead and do bookwork problems, page 547, numbers one through five.